Okay, so we're at office hours for, was it 10, 19? All right, so let's define how many parameters do we want in our function foo? Three. Three? Let's do. Let's add one four. more. Yeah, four. 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 E? No, too much. Too much. <laughs> All right. This D, yeah. We'll go with three. Does it need to be in height? Four. Uh, what do we want the function to be? Yeah. Some kind of if statement? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say with addition. With addition, with arrays, with like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with addition, with arrays, with like see what a else? random integer in there somewhere, too. Yeah, and with a function <laughs> inside it. <laughs> we'll get slightly complicated. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. 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 Okay. So our function foo takes in four parameters A, B, C, D. Um, okay. So what does the tree look like? What's the topmost node? Yeah. 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 Oh, what's on the left side? <laughs> the function. The function. A, B, C, D. And then on the right? What's it? If. The if? All right. And then what's the leftmost node of the if statement? Condition. Apply. Less. Less. Plus. Plus. Apply. 10, 20. Less than. Less than. So I guess it depends, kind of, we didn't parenthesize this, but we can kind of see it's, that's what we want, right? A plus B is less than 10, right? So that would mean that the topmost operator here is going to be the less than. And the left-hand side, what's that going to be? A plus six. Plus. Plus. There we go, plus. And then the left one here? A. A. And the right one here? B. Uh, B or six? Oh. B. B. Oh. Wait, can we put a six? No, we have a 10. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Less than, let's say 10. All right, what's our first if clause? So our then branch. Yeah. Apply. And what's the function that we're applying? C. And what's the parameter, the first parameter that we're applying? And the left of the array operator? And the right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So you guys could do this. And this part right. is okay, but then... The else? Is going to also be applied? Yep. And, and the left here? <laughs> Array. Can you... Um, and the left? On the screen, you can't really see the glares. Oh. Actually uh, can somebody jump up there and... Uh, it's the next one. It's the one in the super oh. corner. Yeah. It's okay, don't worry. None of this stuff's important. Uh, <laughs> except for that! <laughs> right, apply, bracket. Um, so what's the left of the apply operator? D. D? And the right? A. And what are we applying that function to? A. Is that it? Explain what's so. <laughs> <laughs> is that B A multiplying or? Yeah, that's what I had a question. Oh, uh, well, what we I, we just do this index tree, right? So what is it now? It's like D A multiplying. Where? Where? On the far right. The L statement. Like, what is L? Uh, use D, uh, take the array. Well. Apply the array function. operator to D with the index A. Whatever that is, return as a function. Call that function with the parameter A. And you can see this is exactly how we wrote the uh, the else case here, right? Oh yeah. That's the that's the little There's only so much we can do. Um, maybe it's like H D, right? Nice job. Okay, perfect. Okay.
Okay, so we have the apply. So yeah, so you can see just like this, there's no really no difference here. Um, it doesn't really matter that we're using, we could, I mean, we could add things and then use an array to get a function, whatever, we could pass one of the parameters. So, question on that part. Sure. Is A being passed to B, or is A being passed to Where? the array A? On the else? Where? Yeah. So A is being passed in as a parameter to what function? So we're not passing it to the array D, right? Think of, well, in this case we can see that, you can think of an array of functions, right? No different than anything else, right? Function, oh, okay. Functions are just objects, right, or data. Uh, so we can have an array of functions, and then we can choose which one of those functions to call based on some index, and we can pass something into there, right? So I haven't done this. I don't know if this type checks or not. I don't have no idea what's going to happen, so. Uh, but that's what's fun. That's what we'll do. Okay, any other questions just on this? Okay. Okay, so we need to assign types to everything here, right? Um, so, we're going to first number all the nodes, right? All right, we'll give it whatever. Type here. Um, we can give that a type. We can give this a type. Three, four, um, five, six, seven. Uh, eight, nine, ten. Wait, how did that get? Eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, uh, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Is that right? Eighteen nodes in the tree. So I just did a depth first pre-order sort of the nodes, right? So super simple, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I look at node one and I say, so what are the constraints on node one based on the types here? There's some type A, B, C, and D. Uh, so there's not some type, right? A, B, and C, and D are variables. Uh -huh. But they each have some type, yeah. and foo has a type, uh -huh. which takes in, which is a function that takes in each of those types and returns what? A type. And what? What do we know about that type? We don't know. That's not true. What do we know about that type? It's the same. Same as the if. Yeah. Same as the if. Same as this oh. node. Same as three, right? Okay. Because we know that whatever this returns, that's going to be the return type of foo. Right. So just by looking at this, right, we know. Okay, foo is a function, it takes in four parameters. We don't know any of the types, and we don't know the type of the if statement. But this is basically what we have right now, so we'll, we'll kind of try to keep a list of the types here. Uh, so we have, let's see, well, how do I want to do this? Uh, the type of foo, uh, the type of a, the type of b, the type of c, the type of d. Um, uh, let's say type one and type Nodes 1 and 2 don't really have a type, so we don't really care about it that much. Uh, so let's start with kind of the type of 3. Okay. So I know just from looking at this, I have the following constraints. So I know foo is a function that takes in a TA, a TB, a TC, a TD, and returns what? T3. T3. Right? So this type here is that whatever this type is, that's what foo is going to return. Uh, do I know anything else about A, B, C, or D? A is an integer? How do you know that? Because of the 5 node. Have we looked at 5 yet? No. What have we looked at? Just the first. Just the first. First, first. first. yeah. That's right. That's the first constraint <coughs> that we have. Boom. Just by looking at this, this first node. Uh, we can look at the second node. The second node really doesn't do anything. Uh, but now we want to look at this third node, this if statement. So. We have an if statement. So what is what does an if statement say about the types of T4, T9, and T14? T4 is a Boolean. T4 is a Boolean. Why? Because uh, the condition, the 
the statements inside the if 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 are a boolean. Yeah. So condition. The condition is a boolean. The condition of an if statement has to be a boolean, either true or false. So I know that T four has to be a bool. Right. What else do I know? Uh, nine and fourteen are the same as uh, foo and if the same type as foo basically because those are going to come up based off the. Condition. Not the same type of foo. What's the type of foo? T three. Right. T three. Perfect. So. I'm going to actually just kind of leave them here. I could write here that T9 is T3 and T14 is T3 too, but you can kind of see we're going to run out of room here at some point. Um, so to keep it legible, when I visit these, I'll know that they return a type T3, right? And this makes sense, right? So if you have an if condition, no matter which one you go down, it has to return the same type, otherwise you're going to get a type mismatch. Yes? When you say 9 is T3, is it equal to or is it like arrow T3? Well, what I'm doing is I'm unioning the type T9 and T3, uh -huh. which means that those types must be equal. So I'm doing unification. So I'm doing type unification. T9 has to be equal to T3. Since I haven't touched T9 yet, I'm just going to replace it with T3. Okay. Right. So in my tables, I would do that. I would list all the types, and then I'd say, OK, well, T9 is equal to T3. Mm -hmm. So I could do either one. I could replace all the T3s in there with T9s, and then I could place all the T nines with t14s or I could replace them all with t3. The point is right now I know that these types have to be the same. So if it turns out that this type is something different, if this is an integer and this is a boolean, then we have a type error because I've just declared here that these are the same two types and they're the same as the return value of foo. Uh, I have a doubt actually. Uh, sure. Why do we go on to assume that uh, t3 are there and t3 are of the same type? Because what if it's if condition returns an integer, else re returns maybe a string or something, aren't they different types? Why would we just go on to assume in one shot that uh, the it's, it's, it's going to be the same type under an if block? So would that be a valid, I don't know, would you, would you be able to have a consistent type system where in, if the code goes down one branch, it returns an integer, but if it goes down another branch, it returns a string? Uh, so but that is a possibility, possibility, right? I can say, for example, if x equal to 10, uh, return an integer, else return a string. Right, right. You could, that, that, that you is could, a right code. You could, well, you right. could write that program. That doesn't make it a valid program in our type system. But the function itself would, would have to return. Right. So you got to think, so remember, sure. now this is kind of different than we've been thinking about, probably what you've been thinking about if statements right here, right? Right here, uh, we're saying that these actually return something. So you can think of them as a function, okay. right? So if you think about a function, could a function return down one branch an integer and return another branch a string? Oh, what if they were different functions in, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. If they're different right. functions, it's fine. The point is that um, I need to be able to do, I could go down at either of these branches. So let's say I'm assigning this to a variable uh, bar, right? So how do I know what the type of bar is? Oh, it's it has to be, be consistent of, regardless oh, okay. of whatever branch gets taken. It has to be consistent. You could oh, write okay. a program like that, but it wouldn't pass my type system. Even though to you it may be okay, like you could write a pro, you could, like in Python, you could do something weird like that. Okay. You could have sometimes be a list, sometimes be a string. Um, but specifically in this type system, so that's actually the more valid, real reason is we're saying this language we created in this type system, mm -hmm. that these have to be the same. All right. Now, is this because we're returning it to the function, or do we assume it? So the, the reason is, is that the if statement is not just uh, control flow operator, it returns something. So it returns whatever, if this statement is true, it returns whatever's in the then clause. If there's an else, it returns whatever's in the else clause. Then we didn't say it, but if it didn't have an else clause, we can say it returns null or something like that. Like for instance, this is how Ruby does it. So you can actually have like a variable assignment equals an if statement, and then it will, depending on the branch, return that value. So everything returns a value, which kind of becomes very nice. Um, uh, also, uh, that segment of code that you've written there, it's not a valid C program as such, right? I don't sure. think we're not, is this, does anything here look like C? You know, I'm, I'm just, uh, <laughs> no, we're using more ML, OCaml style uh, syntax okay. and semantics because that's really where this kind of comes from. So it's a lot easier to apply that there. Okay. Um, but there's nothing that says we can't apply this to C, except we may change our if, if statements and say that they don't actually return anything. Uh, one more doubt. So, mm -hmm. what, what exa if, how would I write this in C, for example? How can I say, for example, function x is equal to something else? How can you can you do that? C, like, can you say? What's the difference? Oh, okay. This is what yeah, this yeah. means. All right. Yeah. Okay. Just different syntax.
Anything else? Hmm. Alright. So we are so we just did T3. So now we want to analyze T4. Right? So what do we know about the less than operator? <coughs> it returns a boolean, which is good. So we know this has to be a bool. So we know that T4 has to be a bool, which we know it is a bool, so that's good. If it was not a bool, it's a type error, right? We'd quit. So we what else do we know about T5 it? T5 and T8. Sorry, right. There's it's an arithmetic operator. Uh, not an arithmetic. Okay. Some, I'm thinking of a word. Relational. Relational. What's that? Relational. Relational. Right? It's comparing two values. It's it's relating two values. Right? So what do we know about it? Both the branches will have a new omega type. Uh, they have to be numeric types, but we're, we're ignoring that for now, right? That was just kind of for the, the display purposes, because we would want to maybe say that. Um, but let's say you can compare strings with less than, right? So we'll just say that um, these two types have to be the same, right? So T5 and T8 have to be the same. So I'm just going to say they're both T5s. Do I know anything else about T5? No, right? I don't know anything yet. I just know that this, I know that these two have to be identical, have to be the same types. Okay, now let's go to this guy. So here, I have no idea if it's going to work. Let's see. Okay, so here, so I have a T5, and then I say, okay, this is an addition operator. Um, so what kind of operator is this? The plus operator. Oh, uh, that's arithmetic. Yeah, so what do we know about that? Uh, it has to have two. Okay, it doesn't have to be numeric, right? We're getting kind of rid of that. Because we can add strings together. Oh, okay. We can concatenate them, right? So but they have to be the same. They have to be the same. And the same as what? Integer. <laughs> Don't have to be integers. They so have to be the same type. They have to be the same type, but what else has to be the same? When you add two integers together, together what do you get? Another integer. You have to get another integer, right? So that's what, so whenever we see like a plus, whatever, one, uh, I don't know, A, big A and big B, Right, so if that's type T1, this is type T2, this is type T3. We know we have the constraint T1 is equal to T2, which is equal to T3, right? So that's the constraint that we have, is they all have to be the same. Okay, so, so that's what we know here. So uh, I'm just gonna propagate the T5s and just say these are all T5s. Okay, now I visit node six, which kind of looks like node B because my handwriting's bad. So we visit node six. So what's the type of node six? T five. T five. Does A do we know? Is A doesn't have any other type, right? It's just a T A. Um, so yeah, we can actually then replace this with T A. Right. So we can kind of put here. Well, T five is equal to T A. Or we it, it, it can also re replace the opposite way around, right? T T, t, t if we, we can we T A equal to Yes, exactly. We could switch it around. We could replace all the TAs with T5s. I like the A's because of parameters. So that kind of helps me say this is the type of A. All right, so we did six. Now we're going to do seven. So what do we know about what's the type of B, the variable B? TB. TB. Do we know anything about it? But we know that from this, we know that it has to be what? T5. T5. And what's the type of T5? TA. Perfect. So now we can actually replace... We can say TB is equal to the type of TA. And we can also replace that in this type of foo. Boom. So now we do have a constraint. This should be a D. Right? So now we do have a constraint. Now we know that whatever foo is, it's got to take in the same, the two first two parameters have to be the same type. All right, cool. So we did seven. Now we do 10, or we do node eight which has the type of what? T5. What's the type of 10? Int. Yeah, int. So now we know that T5 has to be an int. What's T5? TA, which means that TA has to be an int, right? So this is, that means we have to have, I'm gonna do lowercase. All right, so that means everywhere I see a TA, I can replace it with an int. So I know TA is an int. I now know this is an int. I now know yeah, these are both ints. All 
right? So it's kind of interesting. Without this 10 here, right? So this plus operator means that A and B have to have the same type. And this 10, when we're comparing them, that means that, and they have to return the same type. And this comparison means that these have to be the same type. And this is an integer, which means this is an integer, which means both of these are integers. So that's how we know that now we've gone through this branch, we know foo is a function that takes in an integer and an integer and two other types that we don't know and returns some other type t3. Questions on that? Mm -hmm. All right, what node do we do next? Uh, t3. Okay. Node 9. 9, node 9, exactly. So t3. Perfect. Okay, we have an apply. So what do we know then about an apply? What constraints does that give us? The left side has got to be a function, and how many parameters does it have? The amount of right nodes. The amount of sibling nodes, right nodes, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So this has one. Uh, what's the return value of this function? The, the type of the array. The return value? No, no. So it should be T3. T3, right? Yeah. Exactly. So whatever this returns, this function, when we apply it, better return it. So now we know that TC has to be, so it's a function that takes in, uh, we don't know what this is yet, so we'll use T11, right? Um, T11, and it returns a T3. We don't know yet. We haven't looked at this yet. All we know is that this is some node that has the type T11. And these are the only constraints that we have on this right here. So we can kind of say T11. So right, so whenever, this is when we get to a case like this, we just generate a new type because we have no constraints as to what that type is. Whereas here, instead of creating a new type, well, we know these all have to be the same type T3. So I don't need to create a new type because I already know that whatever type it is has to be a T3. So then now we look at, so we look at 10, we see that it's TC. We've kind of already done that, right? So we should have maybe said type 10 here, uh, which I think we'll probably get to over here. But um, we can see here that, uh, so we kind of already did type, type TC is a function that takes in T11 and returns T3. Okay, now we go to node 11. So node 11 is the uh, array access operator. So what does that tell us about the types of it and its children, the constraints? The right T12 is an array of T11. Uh, T12 is an array of T11. Yeah. So uh, T12, yes, exactly. OK, perfect. It is an array of T11s. Right? T is an int. Uh, T13 is an int. Right. So these are the two constraints just looking at this node. Right. So we know the array access operator. We know whatever we access has to be a T11. And we know whatever's on the left is an array. So we know that whatever T12 is has to be an array of whatever this returns, which is T11. And then we also know we always access an uh, array operator with whatever's on the right, and it has to be an integer, because that's how we specified it. Uh, so we know that t13 is an integer. So then we go, we visit node 12, and we say, okay, this means type of d is equal to the type of t12. So I know this is here, so I can um, say that this is an array of t11. I can kind of get rid of that, it's not really necessary. And then I visit T13, and I say, OK, uh, what's the type of A? An int, and the type of 13, we know, is an int. Are these the same? Yes, and that's really good. Uh, if there was any doubt, if this was anything besides an int, 
we would quit. We'd err. Say this is this does not work. Is there anything like that in your homework? If it's not, I'm <laughs> just telling you how it works. <laughs> but we're talking about concepts. We're not talking about the homework. Okay. Okay. So then I know T three T thirteen is an int. I know I'm not going to use T thirteen anymore. Uh, so I can just kind of I'm kind of it's like garbage collecting just to make some space there. Okay. So I type check this whole thing, right? Got all the constraints there. So now I go to the else branch. I don't even I'll just leave it, it's fine. <laughs> I don't even know how to like turn it off or anything. That thing baffles me. You can accidentally answer it. Never. No, no, I don't. It'll it'll go. <coughs> Alright. Okay, so we have node fourteen. That's an apply node. So then what do we know about this? So uh, let's say we have we need T18 15. This isn't bad handwriting comes back to fight you. Okay. So T15 here, T18, and T3. So what do we know about these from the apply? T18 returns T3. Uh, T18. Uh, wait. T18, so T18 is the parameter to the apply function, right? So what do we, so T15 is what? Right, we know it's a function, right? So we don't, we don't look at this at all. We just know that T15 is a function. How many parameters does this function have? One. One. And what's the first, so the type of that parameter? T18. T18, and what does it return? T3. T3, exactly. Right. I just have a quick question. How how is T fifty in a function? It's an array, right? We don't know yet. We haven't looked at it. All we know is we're treating this as a, so we know that just by looking at this node, we know exactly how to take this node and apply its types to its children and apply the not the types but we can calculate the constraints of its children based on its types. Right. So this is what we know. We know that T fifteen is a function that takes in some type T18 and returns a type T3. That's it. That's all we know. And then we just keep doing what we've been doing, right? So we go and then we look at T15. We say, okay, T15 is an array, uh, is an array access. So then we have what, T16 here and T17 here. Um, so what does, so what is the array access? What types, just, just looking at T15, T16, T17, right? What constraints do we have there on array access? Yeah, T17 is an int. And we'll, then what do we know about T16? It's an array of T15. Yeah. Great. Just had one more quick question about it. Uh, in the else part, why have we assumed that it is a function? It can also be a multiplication operator, right? It, it, it can be day of a into a. Uh, so that would be like this, right? Stop. Right. So yeah. So. Okay. Whatever we're. Ah. So this is an operator, right? So a times b. Okay. We, if we saw a b, that would be the token a b. So yeah. Yeah, it's a little weird way of writing it, right? Which you're probably not used to because you can't really do this in a lot of languages, yeah. but there's nothing nothing special, it's just an array of some type, right? And that type happens to be a type of function. Okay, perfect. So we have 16 and as an array of type T15. Uh, so we know what T15 is, right? So we can just replace this with that, right? Right? So nothing changed. So I just took T15 and I plugged it in there. That's fine. Okay, so we looked at 15, so let's look at 16. So what is, what's the type of the value in there? TD. TD, yeah, so TD. So we know that TD must be equal to type 16. So that means um, type 16 and type TD, can we make those equal? No, why not? They're both arrays, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can. Yeah. So if I just say T11 is equal to T18 goes to T13, 
right? So this, this gives me that constraint, right? T11 is equal to T18 goes to T30. T30. So T11 is a function that takes in type T18 and returns uh, type 3, right? So then I can actually just change this right here. Uh, I can say TD is an array of T18 uh, goes to T3, right? Cool. Okay, so we did that. Then we look at T17. Uh, what's the type of A? Int. Int. And what's the type of T17? Int. Boom. Type checks. Everything's good. If I can get rid of T17, <coughs> I guess I can leave it out. But it's almost done here. Okay. So then I go back up, and then I look at T18, or I look at node 18. So what's the type of A? Int. So, and then what's so we know we've used T18 here, right? Here, here. No, that looks bad. And here. Uh, so then what constraint do we have here? Yeah, T18's got to be an integer, right? And so I get it to replace. So anywhere I see T18, right, I can replace that with an integer. through, right? Do we get any type errors? No. So we're done. So we can say that the type of foo is an int. It's a function that takes in an integer. An integer. Uh, what's the type of C? Int. Yeah, so that's what you really should do, right? You should break it down. You should get rid of as much of these redundant types as possible, right? So you should replace the T11 here with a function uh, in, oops, T11 is int uh, goes to T3, uh, which goes to T3. That right? Yeah. So that's the type of C. And then the type of D is array of int goes to T3. And then what does foo return? Um, just to clarify, does uh, TD mean that uh, it's an array of functions that takes in integers and returns the type T3? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. That's kind of a, it's an array. I kind of did that. It's kind of tricky as if you do that or don't do that, right? This is kind of s signifying that it's a function. Okay. But the arrow also signifies it's a function. So this is a function that takes in an integer and turns the type T3. So this is an array of functions. Each element of that array is a function. This is an array of functions. Each function in that array takes one parameter, which is an integer, and returns a type, which we don't specify, but they all have to return that same type. Yeah? So let's say you have like um, another parameter, e, and mm -hmm. we know that c is a function, and then let's say we had like e apply to c, would that be a type error because c doesn't have Parameter, parameter, or would that not be? Uh, how do you want to change it? So can you say that again? So like, if you had like two functions that you know, of, like, in um, in this function, C has a parameter, the array. Mm -hmm. So let's say you had um, another parameter E that was given, and it was also um, a function, and you applied E to just the variable C, but C did not have a 
Uh, it would depend. I don't know. You'd have to work it out. <laughs> so it's hard to say exactly. So it's kind of crazy, right? So foo A is just an integer, B is just an integer, and C is a function that takes in as its first parameter a function and returns a type 3, T3. So C accepts a function of type that takes in an integer and returns a C3, and it returns a type T3. And then it also takes in an array of ints to type 3s, and the whole thing returns some type T3. Does it matter that all those return types in the parameters are T3? It doesn't matter that they're T3. It matters that they're all the same. So you can't have this be T3 and this be T5, right? So that's the constraint, actually. So if you saw a call to foo, you could actually type check it to make sure it's valid by checking all the types and making sure all those type T3s were the same. We're not going to go into that, but... Um, would it be wrong if we just said that um, in the third and fourth field of the function, if you just said T3 instead of the whole thing, that would still be right, right, uh, intuitively? If you said what? Say it again. Instead of uh, writing int gives T3 gives T3, if we just said T3, it would be intuitively right, uh, right? Okay. If you just put T3 for this whole thing? Yeah, because the function no. ultimately returns a T3. I don't know, but this is the this is the this is the type of C. The type of the third parameter of foo is this. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So this third parameter, this is where types get crazy, right? This is or this is a function, so that takes in one parameter. So like you could define a function C. C. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, define a function C that takes in some parameter. Uh, let's call it bar, and uh, you could return, let's say, bar of 10, whatever. So bar, so that what gets passed in is a function that okay. takes in one parameter, that's an integer, and returns some type t3. And that means this function c returns some type t3. Uh, wait, let's go. Any more questions on this or type checking stuff? Oh, um, I, I think that there's a part in the homework, unless I did it wrong, where they have like a function and then like two functions and then one function is inside of another function without a parameter. So I'm kind of confused. Like, what if it was just a function without a parameter, would that result in an error? Or can you somehow oh, do that? You can pass a function, right? That's exactly what's happening here. So this C is a, is a function, right? right. What gets passed in here is C is a function that takes in something and returns type T3. The thing that it takes in is actually another function. Okay. So you just know that when you see that usage, right? So let's say you had something like, uh, mm, we've kind of run out of variables here. Let's say if you had like X, uh, I don't know, gets passed Y and maybe you have y gets past the 10. So here you know that y is a function that takes in one parameter of type integer mm -hmm. and returns something. Maybe you can depend on context what it is. Here you know that x is a function which takes in a function which takes in a type 10 and returns something. Okay, well that's what I was asking. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Question. Mm -hmm. So let's say c sees the function. Let's say it didn't return t3. Was, would that still be correct? What do you mean? So, C type of C is a function that takes in int t3 and returns the t3. What if that last t3 was something else? It was like a t4, let's say. Or not, not pertaining to this, like, let's say t20, for example, since we didn't use t20. Right. Uh, so this would be wrong for this example, right? So could that happen? Yeah, it definitely could happen. But for this example, it's wrong because our constraints tell us that whatever C ultimately returns, right? Because here's where that constraint comes in. Oh, because okay. of this branch, C, whatever C returns, has to be a type T3. So that has to be the same as whatever this D bracket A passes in, right? So this is where this comes in, is when we, D -rep, when we take one of those elements of the array, we're left with something that takes in an int and returns a T3. And so no matter which one of these you take, one of them is going to be a T3. Okay. That's kind of cool. Um, 
Yeah, this makes sense, right? So, yeah. Um, one question. Uh, if in the assignment I have a the type error, mm -hmm. they, 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 there's a different type. Do you point us to call it ahead or to stop or to hide at the error and don't go ahead at all? Uh, yeah, once you hit a type error, you're done, right? Okay. So then you say these types can never be the same, they're done. Okay. Um, Any other questions on homework? Three? No, just project so questions? Project and then midterm. And then midterm. <laughs> it's a little late I for that. I just have a very general question. I like general questions. I heard that the projects are not evenly distributed in well, grades. Like, is that true? Like, because some people say that like project one and two are not worth as much as three, four, five. That will probably be the case. Oh. So they were a lot easier. How would it? Have you, is it undecided? Yet? Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% decided. They'll probably be worth essentially half, so they'll be the they'll be together one project. So okay. it'll be one out of five. That's kind of Are what I'm thinking. Are you copying any project? Oh. Uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's a lot. Why, why would I do that? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Is this one of the hardest class and people usually drop and retake? I don't know. <laughs> I've heard it's hard. Is it the hardest? I don't know. It may be when you take this class. I feel like it's the hardest. Wow. But then it means your other classes are going to be easier, right? I don't know. Then once you pass it, right? You pass the hard one and that means everything else after that is easy. I hope so. <laughs> there you go. Because you learn, right? You learn all the skills you need that help you in your remaining classes. Is the is the final grade gonna be on a curve or it will be? Uh, it depends on how the absolute. grades turn out. I don't know. Do we know the average for the oh, midterm yeah. and all that? Uh, yeah, it was seventy eight. Yeah. Uh, the average for the midterm was seventy eight. Um, I haven't calculated it for everything. I don't Are the test cases from Project Three ever gonna be released? Nope. <laughs> never ever. Nope. Never ever ever. No, because these are reused from year to year, right? So it wouldn't be fair to think about it. That wouldn't be fair to you guys, right? Then next people yeah. next year who share those test cases amongst each other becomes easier for them. Yeah. Screw those future people. <laughs> Anything else generally? We can talk about uh, Project 4 now. Will you be are the midterms going to be equally? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they'll be equal. Equally weighted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many percent is the midterm? On the syllabus, man. It is. Oh, yeah, okay. it's twenty. Of course. Final. <laughs> <laughs> Final is twenty. So it's like thirty-five for. This is all math things that you can do point. on your own time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is the portion of midterm one? Would be in midterm two, right? Like midterm two would be after midterm. The portion in midterm one would be the same as midterm two, right? Who says? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it could be anything up to the the date of the midterm, right? Is in scope. So maybe if I feel like people didn't know something from the first midterm. It's going to be on the final, right? So you might as well know it. Yeah. Or we either know it then or know it during the final. Are we getting back the midterm one papers? You can go pick them up. Yeah, we could have picked them up now. Oh, okay. Or today, yeah. Uh, yeah, Sai has them. You just have to make a plan. And about the solutions of the midterm one, are you going to upload them? Like the key? Uh, I don't know. There's key. Sai has yeah, the key right there. It's, it's out there. there. Yeah, I mean, it should be pretty clear, right, from the grading of what happened or what went wrong. Figure it out. Work together, right? Yeah, maybe we can work on a homework and project together. Well. Not the projects. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you do on the homeworks, right? Your homeworks are whatever. Homeworks are just practice for midterms. So if you want to cheat or whatever, I don't care. You're just going to fail the midterm. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to hear about it. Obviously. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything? Any project? Project questions? I have a good look at it. That's a problem. You should I start. Yeah. <laughs> we have grading questions. So, we make an appointment, or we uh, you can make an appointment, or you can yeah ask the TA when you pick it up. Will there be a chance to maybe have a project six, like a extra one? Oh, more yeah. projects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To make up yeah, for yeah, yeah, like yeah, something exactly. else. Like uh -huh. maybe you could uh -huh. give us one to make up for like a yeah something like one. the the first like, project. Yeah, or like, I don't know, just like an <laughs> project six option. Possibly yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. that would be nice. Yeah. An extra work for us. Though. Yeah. Extra credit. Yeah. 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 Extra credit. That's a lot of stuff already. I don't <laughs> know if there's any room for extra stuff. Uh, may I mean I'll, I'll consider it. I won't. I won't dismiss it outright, but I don't know that I'd hope on it. I was 
thinking about doing something like that for the homeworks, but. Uh, homework is yeah, the, the greatest like tool you know project work more so yeah because yeah. they're more they're harder <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's how it should be okay uh, project four questions yeah how did you compare it in like uh, difficulty to the last one <laughs> <laughs> uh, easier I've heard less time so uh, because we give you a lot of the code so okay. you don't have to start stuff from scratch right there's already a structure in place uh, it's a little bit difficult because you have to understand that structure, right? So you have to look at it, understand it. That's why you should start early, is so that you're already looking at it, already thinking about the description, what do I have to do, um, thinking through the project, okay, here's what the code that's already there is like. You don't need to get started right away, but you should read it to start thinking about it as soon as possible. Um, and then, yeah, and then it's a less difficult because you're not building the whole thing from scratch. Yeah. So, will you be teaching this class again next semester? I don't know that I can say anything on, <laughs> oh, online about that. Okay. If you ask me when we turn off the video. Oh. <laughs> Is this the mic? Yeah, I don't think that works. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good microphone. Oh. Um, do we have to find the first and follow sets of your grammar that you gave us to make those parse trees? Huh? That's a tough question. Possibly. Probably, right? You may need to. Um, how can we verify if we like did that right? Like I know one way is like if you made project three, then you can put it into your program. <laughs> that is correct. And do it. But I don't have that done correctly. You do it by hand. You don't you have to do it by, by hand. But can I verify with someone? Or like, um, is this I, you could ask me, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So project four is related to project three. They're all related. It's the same <laughs> class. Of course they're related. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay. you have to read that and then you can talk to me about it. I'll see you next semester if you are teaching this class again. <laughs> 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 Alright, all the <laughs> <laughs>